Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> and I think what you're seeing is a reflection of the policymakers responding to data. Mm -hmm. And the increase and the positive um, data that's been coming out needs to be reflected in the interest rate markets and in the commentary coming from the ECB officials. So I think this just uh, kind of reflects what we've seen broadly across a lot of the uh, emer uh, a lot of the world, where you've seen stronger economic data, both out of uh, you know some of the European countries with uh, stronger CPIs, and like you mentioned, the blockbuster jobs report in the U.S. Yeah, why do you think the market reaction was so dovish to the ECB meeting last week? I think that the uh, the market was really expecting Lagarde to come out and just say that they're going to need to hike a lot more. Mm -hmm. And by increasing the focus on data dependency, the market kind of envisaged that as like the precursor to a shift and a downshift in the, in the way that the steps are going to come in. And what the market then realized, once you have like the blockbuster uh, payrolls report and then the positive data all of last week, was the data strong. Data dependency means you follow the data. And the market got a little carried away by saying, oh, this is just like, let's listen to the central banks instead of listening to the data. Which is why the terminal rate went higher last week, to your point. Absolutely. Yeah. How linked are the ECB and the Fed and, and even the BOE at this stage? I mean, when we think about 2023, is it going to be a year where banks are acting in, 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 in lockstep with each other, or is there going to be more divergence this year? So I think when we look at central banks, they respond to the economic data in their country. And I think for the past decade, really, the world economies have been much, much closer. And like you look at last year, and sure, the central banks generally acted together. Mm. But you take the Fed, they hiked by 425 basis points last year. How much did the ECB hike? Like a 200. Well, now it's 300. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like 250-ish like, uh, point difference mm. between those central banks is a huge divergence between the two. But you say that they're acting in lockstep, and I think that's where we'll get a bigger shift this year, mm. where we'll have some central banks hiking by 100 to 200 basis points and others possibly by zero mm. or just a, a small amount. Mm. Um, if I look back at the last 10 days or so, there's clearly so much data to digest and, and this big shift that we, we opened the conversation talking about in terms of um, rate expectations. When I've been speaking to um, equity investors, the data point that they've put a lot of focus on is the used car price index. And obviously, used car prices have been a huge um, feature of what we saw in the pandemic, you know, shooting through the roof. Uh, and then they started to come down. Now it looks like they're stabilizing a little bit. Um, yeah. What emphasis or what weight do you put on used car prices and, and how meaningful is the fact that we're seeing some stabilization now? I think all of these subcomponents are important to the extent that they can be a leading indicator into the broader inflation picture. And I think what we saw in the pandemic was that used cars became uh, a signal because they couldn't get like new cars as easily. And so I think that the, the value of different data points shifts and we kind of look to some of the central bankers to indicate which uh, indices they look at. Mm. So when the central bankers say, hey, we're looking at used cars, then mm -hmm. obviously the market focuses on it. Mm -hmm. um, right now, though, I think that the focus is on headline inflation. Mm -hmm. But very quickly, that's, I think that will start shifting towards core inflation and C uh, wage inflation and services inflation once you start kind of falling away from the energy impact. It's really 